All right. Uh, well, let's see if more folks actually show up today. I think uh, a lot of the folks are tied up with KubeCon. Yeah, yeah. So you're not going. Yeah, I'll be going. Uh, but uh, oh, cool. Yeah, are you going? No, unfortunately. Okay. Well, there's next time too. I and mean, then there's AI Dev in Seattle. There's also um. Open Source Summit. There's um, KubeCon, North America too. And yeah, 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 yeah. Hopefully, I managed to go to that one. I've never been to a KubeCon, so I'd love to love to see one yeah. in person. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Oh, thanks for adding me. I was trying to find the link to the to the agenda. Yeah. So Ron wanted to share more updates here, but he's not online yet. Oops. We have a short meeting today. Nobody shows up. Mm -hmm. It looks like Joel's having issues with uh, connecting to. Mm. We got Andre just showing. Hey, Andre. Hey, everyone. How are you doing? Hello. Are you going to KubeCon, Andre? Yeah, I'm actually traveling on this Sunday. So I guess I'm traveling on Saturday. Where are you coming from? You're are you in London? London is you? like just two hours train okay. for us. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. What about you when you arrive? I arrive on Sunday. Mm. Arriving Paris on, on Sunday. I, I leave um the Bay Area on Saturday. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. So we got our demo. Hello. Hey, Adele. Hey. All right. I think we can get started. So I think uh, Ron is not uh, online yet, uh, but he proposed, you know, this agenda. So it's pretty open. Um, you know w what we want to see going forward in the working group. I mean, the white paper will be published, um, I think on Monday by the CNCF, there's gonna be a blog post and a uh, link to the PDF. It, it looks pretty nice. I think I have a draft here. Maybe I can show you kind of like what it will look like. I think it's this one. That was fast. <laughs> Yeah, so it will look something like this, right? So all of us are, will be, our names will be on the white paper, the ones who contributed. And then it's got some nice graphics. Adele's. Um, got pretty small in here. It's Cali Girl will be here. It looks kind of small, yeah. Uh, so in, um, yeah, and then it's basically everything that we worked on with all the, all the different graphs and, yeah. 
Yes. I'm surprised they had like they did all of this in a very short time. That was yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and yeah, so this this is the paper. So they there's going to be coverage in the conference all over the place. I think uh, Priyanka is going to talk about it in her keynote. And there's another keynote with uh, Nikita and Raja and Kathy and somebody else, uh, Patrick. Only from Intel is going to be there and talking about DRA, but they, they, they will be talking about this as well. So a lot, expect a lot of coverage. Very so nice. I think everybody should be proud of, of all of this, all, all of this work. Yeah. And then I'll send out an email or, or a chat message when, once the, it gets published. Uh, so that's the white paper. Uh, so the, the landscape, uh, we are still working on it. I think uh, Ron created a, a, a draft, a PR, uh, but we're still missing a lot of logos. So there's a lot of work in, in, in adding those logos and making it look better. To anybody so, who... <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm just saying that anybody wants to help out, feel free to... Uh, jump in or I think uh, we can uh, guide you through where you need to change or we need to have the logos. Sorry, Adele, you go ahead. I was looking at the uh, the Linux Foundation AI landscape. I think there is a lot of logos that would might overlap with ours uh, that we could probably, sorry, I think just put the link in the chat everyone uh, yeah so that um, there is if you look down there the distributed computing piece there is um, uh, you know the cube providers uh, or some oh. and then there is um, on the training there is uh, you know KServe and for format as well on X and it's not everything but there is some overlap with some of the stuff that we have been talking about yeah um in the inference and uh, the training well yeah the parameters yeah so some yeah. overlap exists i think it we want to probably relate to this somehow and 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 uh and make sure we, yeah we want to avoid confusion too but uh, yeah 100 yeah, percent so it, it goes more beyond just the so I don't know if it's everything here is 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 a is a cloud native project shit, right? Um, but yeah, I mean, there is things that goes beyond platform. A lot of things around the data, for example, which we don't uh, exhaustively explore. We yeah, and it's uh, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. I met with some folks from the LF uh, AI and data and uh, they want us to collaborate with them. So we can also, one of the things is that we can start, some of us can actually start going to their meetings. They're trying to um, work together and see where there's overlap and where there's uh, things that we can actually associate more with cloud native so that, so there's less confusion for, for end users. I think this space in particular uh, is a, is a space where the 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 lines will be very blurry uh, between you know what is CNCF and or cloud native and what is uh, just Linux Foundation because the tooling and everything is trending. So I guess the cloud native have reached critical mass enough to have most of the tooling being built and incubated within. Scope, and so yeah, I think it's uh it's going to be very blurry the lines. Yeah, I think uh, in my opinion, the landscape for data and AI should include more of the projects uh, that are part of the LF data and AI or AI and data, and the uh, CNCF uh, or uh, cloud native AI landscape should include more of a. Uh, cloud native type of projects, right? So that's, but here I think uh, 
it's a mix of everything right so yeah so. It, it's a mix of, literally like you flow is there um uh, almost yeah. if, you, if you look closely you're gonna find not 100 percent, but there's a lot of like you know ray cube is not there but i don't know if it is <laughs> but yeah there's uh there's there's good overlap yeah any any other thoughts from claudia or any, uh, I think they they try to include all of the projects on the NML space. Like even if you take a look at the scikit learn right, like all these libraries, which like initially was not designed to run, um, you know, uh, in a cloud environment. Uh, yes, it is possible to run them all of them, but uh, it's not like their main purpose, right? I believe, yeah. If you scroll to the right, it would be like more kind of you know libraries like PyTorch, I think maybe also here, right? Um, this guy's, yeah. Just data libraries, ML perf. Yeah. <laughs> Argo is even here, I see it. <laughs> That's, yeah, exactly. So <laughs> it's... Uh... Yeah, Volcano is here, which is a CNCF project. And... So, so we can copy the, the logos from here. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. Do, we, we can actually pick up a lot of them here. I mean, we're missing some, I think, but... Uh... Yeah. Like VLLM, VLLM is also it, another one, right? VLLM. Yeah. Uh, Cause of ML. I, I think this one is, 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 I think they spent a lot of time getting in, scraping the web for ML uh, products. And actually, it's it's pretty good uh, coverage, I'd say. Uh, Kubernetes is here too, right? So. <laughs> yeah. We're missing uh, Slurm. It's another project that is. Use for a batch processing. Uh, but yeah, um, so it seems like a lot of work to do. So we we maybe need to start collaborating with them. Yeah. So just just a quick question, like from your perspective, Ricardo, like should we? I mean, at least for CNCF uh, AI landscape, should we identify the project like which is only designed to run in cloud environments, um, or how do you do this? Start yeah, I think we should start with that basically. Or, or that should be a starting point to avoid overlap with uh, initially LF, AI, and data. Right? So, uh, anything can run in cloud. That's that's a, that's also the yeah the the difficult thing because you know if you look at any of these things, they all they all also relate to to cloud. So you can make a relationship with the cloud native. And they can run, on, I mean, most of these also can run on top of Kubernetes. So, <laughs> yeah. If I remember so, correctly, yeah. So, sorry, I just, I, I mean, do we have any kind of requirements what we can call cloud native? I yeah, I was about to ask the same <laughs> thing. Yeah. Or do we want to focus on just on what we know or it's shown to run on Kubernetes? Or because, of course, as you're, you're all saying, anything can run on cloud. But... We have to find some way to reduce this landscape. I think this is a, a test of our resolve in making sure we have a pretty solid definition, uh, which we we have a version of. Uh, I think, like first of all, the definition of cloud native uh, is on in, in you know work in progress. We've taken the one that exists today, uh, but building on top of that definition and aspiring from it. How can we use this definition as a filter uh, for products that we can include or not in the landscape for cloud native AI? I'd say this is you know having having a pretty solid filter as the definition or you know the definition could could probably help us uh, a lot in there. Uh, and we can use what we have already, like the definition that we have, and, and, and translate it quantitatively to yes or no um, uh, based on these logos. Yeah, sounds sounds good to me. And then, but but yeah, I think when when these landscapes are created, too, somebody just creates a pull request and somebody reviews it and goes, like, "Oh, that looks good." Or, okay, well, just just put it in, right? So then that's why we have all these different uh, logos. And and but if we can actually focus on more like, a, you know, this is cloud native and this is not right. So this the, like specific things, and I think. It, It'll be user for and easier for end users. Here's an interesting exercise. Uh, uh, so if you go to industry to the left and then put uh, check all the cloud stuff. 
on the left okay there's the, there's the filter yeah industry go to industry give me a second okay uh -huh. and then go to cloud put in all the cloud stuff and maybe a bunch of other stuff and artificial intelligence and yeah a bunch of other things you're going to get our landscape more or less uh was 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 so this is probably what we would be complementing out of like this is the, the yeah Kubernetes exists, uh, Prometheus, uh, and then, yeah, you didn't put enough check marks, but uh, the point still remains. Like, if you put enough checks, you, you probably will get to a point where you have what we are building as the cloud native landscape um, from this one. So, yeah. It's pretty easy, though. <laughs> it's okay. It's a, yeah. That's a, yeah. Maybe, maybe one point, uh, Ricardo, is like whether we will have enough, I don't want to say the word synergy, but enough enough collaboration between the, you know, the LF, uh, Linux Foundation AI and uh, yeah. uh, what we're doing to maybe have, not need to duplicate the work. Maybe maybe they have enough and we can contribute there, or maybe, you know, they can, we can deduct from what they have. Because um, eventually it should serve more or less the same purpose. Uh, yeah, exactly. Okay, any other thoughts on this? We've got Victor on the call. Joel's on the call, but I don't think he has audio. Yeah, he's connecting to audio. I think he's having trouble since since the start of the call. Yeah. I'll add the link to the uh, notes as well. Uh, yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So I think another thing that we're talking about is creating a radar for the CNCF. There's some radar. Like these radars, for example, that they create the tech radars, right? So this is something we can also start thinking about in terms of end users, make it easier for end users to identify what pro what uh, projects they should get started with. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and I think this ties to the idea that we, we talk, we've been talking about to create like a very small type of uh, maybe Kubeflow of environment for uh, beginners to start uh, or to start using cloud native AI and, and, and learning all the different steps like data prep and creating features and uh, training the model, storing the model, and then running an inference. Any thoughts on the radar? I like the idea of the radar. I haven't used it in a while. Um, so is it is it that you put the use case and gives you the, the, um, the tooling? So how, how would you start using like, uh, is it dynamic or? Uh, so yeah, so I think this doesn't. It's not fixed. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, so I guess the adopt is is tell. It's more targeted towards end users. Mm -hmm. So just tell them like you should adopt these open source projects. Uh, these ones should be tried in your environments. And in these open source projects, you 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 should look at them, but not necessarily adopt them, but maybe you can see if you can use them. But this is outdated, right? So it has a date, right? This is 2021. You see Cilium is it's a lot more mature now. A lot of people are, are using GitHub. Linkerd actually. is also getting questionable, but yeah, the, there's some some things in, uh, in here that still remains. But yeah, I mean, how often, like I, I, maybe this is more me being philosophical, but how often and how are people using the radar today? Maybe we can get more more stats from the. Yeah, uh, there's a cloud native uh, end user uh, yeah. advisory board, and uh, we can start talking to them. Uh, Ricardo Rocha and the TOC is part of it, so we can start collaborating with with them to try to to create one for cloud native AI. To Bron, um, so, 
Sorry, go ahead. Uh, so oh yeah, I'm I'm not I'm not familiar with the right of That's the first time I see one. Uh, so can can you walk me like I see this? What should I understand from this? So yeah, so these are all open source projects. And well, sometimes, sorry, they're meant to be open source, but some of them may not actually think uh, because I see GitHub actions. See, mm -hmm. but then, then it's, it's, I guess it's technologies in the specific space. This one is DevSecOps uh, and then Adopt says like to an end user or an organization says, like, oh, you can use this at any time, right? I mean, they're very mature. So mm -hmm. you can start using them many time. And then the trial one is is basically saying like, well, you if you have like a sandbox environment, you can just go and try this and see how it works out for you and assess this, uh, projects that are, or, or technologies that are not really mature that you can mm, okay. to have them in mind, but uh, they don't, you don't necessarily have to adopt them, right? But they might become relevant later. Mm -hmm. But you can see this is 2021. So this is like, like, yeah, whatever, yeah. like almost three years ago. So this is already out of date, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. This this reminds me a lot was the technology life cycle model where but it's different like the I think it's, it's more or less the same like early early adoption wide acceptance and uh and then new application areas so it looks more or less quite similar except presented differently which is yeah I just think like a cloud native AI will will have more traction now because there's a lot of conversations about AI, right? So everything is AI now. So <laughs> some people will be a lot, a lot more interested in this now than, than in an AI, uh, in an AI rater than, than in a, maybe multi-cluster management or, or DevSecOps uh, rater. Yeah, that's why I was interested in like, we, we can we can uh, get those out of KubeCon, uh, like insights from the usage of the radar. And if we put a radar for AI, uh, you know, will will it help, or do we want to restructure the radar so that it answers some questions to specific questions that people have been asking the last three years? For example, not getting an answer out of. Yeah. Ron, any any thoughts? I mean, you, you came up with this idea initially, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's because I'm simple and I'm not joking. Like. I just kind of put it there in the chat. You look at the landscape, you can actually get similar information, right? You can sort by status and whatnot. Um, but yeah, it's it's like you guys said, it's 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 just trying to call like what is stable, right? There's other ways to do it. So assess trial adopter is not the only, you know, factors mm -hmm. to evaluate these things. Um, but it's just that I think it's really about the snapshot view of things, right? It's that's the real utility. I use this kind of stuff a lot when I'm doing like consulting work and it's, you know, to the untrained eye landscape is just useless. <laughs> Basically, yeah. um, this is something, you know, that's why quadrants, right? This is like to me in the same vein of quadrants. Uh, I think quadrants are a little more popular, right? People expect to see motion in a quadrant, right? You know, last year, this year, next year, you know, when you see things move around, I'd say that same thing should happen in a radar. I would argue it's just not as popular. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, there is differences, right? A quadrant, you know, like a magic quadrant, um, it's really more of competing players at the, you know, in, in theory who are doing the same thing here. I think this is more of commentary on like the utility or the life uh, maturity of, of projects, right. Um, more so than just competition, which is what a radar typically is or not a radar, but a, a quadrant is typically showing. So still, I think, you know, and again, we could also have, a uh, the quadrant, uh, as well. Um, but this is more, I think about just maturity and acceptance is the real benefit here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think, I think it helps a wider set of the population or, or tech population, right? Because it's, I mean, it's more, it's higher level, right? So, you know. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So when you talk about these technologies, it makes it easier for, me, for people to visualize. So it's, speaking of, uh, so before you join, I think we were talking about the the landscape. And yeah. Sorry for my tardiness. I was trapped in a meeting. <laughs> so we, we, 
we basically were looking at this um left AI and data landscape and and we found out that, that there's quite a bit of overlap here. Yep. So so I think we need to work with the left AI and data to try to avoid some of the overlap because they're probably going to see our landscape and then they're going to see, well, we have the same things here, right? So, so oh, there's... yeah. I thought we kind of already discussed this. I thought the, thought the, I mean, I, I don't disagree with you. Uh, I was thinking more of um, we just already agreed to like we're focusing on Kubernetes, right? I mean, we say cloud native, but let's just say it. <laughs> we're, we're focusing around things that run on Kubernetes. Um, and yes, a lot of, I mean, the reality is, is anything can run on Kubernetes, right? Exactly. So, that's, fair. that's what we're talking about. Yeah. So I think a more, I think our, uh, you know, if we were to do it, ultimately ours does need to be very curated to, to that, right? I think a simple break point would be, does some product find more use on or off Kubernetes, right? And if it's on Kubernetes, I think it would fit into ours. If it's not it falls into theirs. Uh, as a general statement, right? Um, you know, you can always fit a square peg in a round hole, right? So um, I still, I, I just as, a, a, again, a general thing, I think it's worth doing. Um, and even if there is some overlap, because they should have things that are not just Kubernetes. Because to say Kubernetes runs the world is a mistake. <laughs> and so we shouldn't imply that. Um, and neither should they uh feel that way yeah. so what I, what i was telling uh ricardo and all um i agree uh, to a great extent but when when you look at the left and i don't know who does that but we could potentially have a cloud a cloud native check mark and that would put the current like the entire our landscape like just focuses on our landscape i don't know if it i agree that we need to zoom out from the details and zoom in to what matters to cloud native. Uh, but when I saw that there's a lot of things in this figure that we, I think, yeah, maybe maybe a 60% overlap. Um, uh, I thought, okay, um, sh should we talk to these folks and see if, you know, if, if, if there's potential for us to either have that checkbox for folks or are folks the same folks visiting this figure like the folks that visit the yeah, CNCF? Uh, I, I would say yes, because there was no CNCF AI. Yeah, so I, I guess what we where we left off is like we probably should reach out at least out of, you know, we've done our work, we've done our due diligence, we've looked into your stuff, but we decided to do ours anyways because one, two, three. Yeah, I mean, if you just kind of look here, I mean, you see AWS, you see IBM, you see like, like there's the intel right like i don't think any of that would land on ours right and whether or not we could fit it into their regime to be focused on kubernetes maybe that's something but uh yeah we just have to like like you said talk to them and think a little more about it yeah we i mean we don't want to like be but wasting time projects, if we're doing right? the same things right but these are projects and not just the logos of the companies like i uh so that google have something you know google contributed something uh Albert, I don't know, this is the model, but he asks, uh, I don't know if it's, it's not cloud native, but it is something that people would use in their cloud native workflows. Uh, but yeah, I, I agree with you. There's, yeah, we probably need the cloud native landscape, uh, but. I mean, it's like us, including Linux, right? Everything we do is Linux, but we're not <laughs> going to mention it, right? So, you know what I mean? Like, the, yeah, it, it, I agree. We, we have to, we should work with them, right? We don't want to piss them off yeah. <laughs> but like there i think there is a there is a specific thing for for us i, I do think victor you have your hand raised though. yeah i actually uh participated in uh, some of the rfa ai data activities just to learn what's going on there uh, my impression is um those um primarily um ai developers whether it's you know developing the algorithm or the applications so one question that not answered uh, even just joining both groups there and here is um, when a container or kubernetes is important for example um, my understanding uh, a lot of the the, the current large uh, language model developed don't really use uh, container technology some use some don't 
right? So I think it will really be, I, I know the, the the document that was shown earlier has pretty nice, like multi-cluster versus single cluster. That's, that's all cool. Um, however, I think the foundational, the basic question probably yet to be clear, clarified for me at least is, um, when um, container, I know uh, we don't obviously know the container have a lot of benefits, but for for AI, uh, for all these different products in the in the ecosystem, when they does it make sense to run it on container versus non container? So more basic rather than you know one cluster versus multi class. So that's more advanced question. And then a second thing is this all similar to CNCF where you know, a lot of projects the member do not really show up in the meetings same thing there I don't think you know a lot, a lot of projects listed here they don't regularly participate in the meetings so it's uh it's uh it's gonna be uh, I guess hard to really reach out to all those uh, individual products and not, uh... yeah that's 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 a good point I think uh and uh Cloud native AI landscape, we can have some metadata that associates that with containers and Kubernetes. How how that relates to cloud native with containers and Kubernetes? I think so that, that makes it more uh, targeted. That, that rather than just having a bunch of projects and you know some, something like here, right? It probably it probably need to be uh, maybe a a cloud native specific uh, the CNCF AI landscape uh, where it can say okay this is the that's already running on uh, I have an option already run on, on containers uh, some of them you know if it's if for, for really for general user if it's possible to tell uh, for which project you can already run containers which one you need some work to run it or, or maybe someone some some of them may not work on container like for um, uh, I, I know that's a quite a Debatable opinion, but I think there are the applications that do not run well on containers. Yeah, but there are other things in cloud native. For example, open telemetry that open telemetry doesn't necessarily run on top of Kubernetes, right? So we have to think about that too. Yeah, if if we we also have in general orchestration, we have if you go up, I think we if if we want orchestration to be just Kubernetes, um, so we have here general orchestration and it. It, it 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 bundles Kubernetes with a lot of other things that might be running on top of Kubernetes or not, uh, but yeah, it, it would be a singleton really here uh, for like orchestration Kubernetes. Uh, previously, we had other things like you know, um, Mesos and whatnot, but uh, yeah, but I think we can try. Uh... We can we will have to look at these and see how they tie to Kubernetes. I know some of them do, like Volcano runs needs Kubernetes. Armada uh, is on top of Q. Q is Q. Anything with a K is a cube. Um, I don't know about Unicorn. Um, I don't know about Unicorn yet, but uh, if they're not, we might have to remove them, right? So and yeah, and so so we don't. We don't uh, say that this is necessarily cloud native, and, and potentially they can be added later. And we can put a, a yeah. checkpoint before they get added. It's like, does this run on Kubernetes? Uh, is it really cloud native, right? And then if it doesn't, then it do it doesn't have to be part of the, the right. specific, specific yeah. land. Y Unicorn, just for since you asked, resource scheduler for Kate's fully Kate's compatible and alternative to the default Kate's scheduler supports on prem, off prem. Um, cloud native. Yeah, so there you go. The new yeah, scheduler. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Okay. okay. <laughs> it, has, it has a K in it. We we missed the uh, K. Oh, no, we missed the K. <laughs> missed the oh. K. <laughs> uh, yeah, and we also have like vector DBs, and that uh, you know they have Melvus. They have I think I don't know I don't know if you've seen Quadrant, and, and they have a lot of the, the DBs. Actually, we don't have. Oh, we have Melvus. Good, uh, but yeah, we. We also put a lot of these in, and yes, they can run on Kubernetes. I don't know if, if it's a good idea for all of them to run on Kube, but yes, you can, uh, although they are not by default. Uh, maybe a use case, that, that's a good point. Like maybe maybe for tools that don't like, I'm putting there in the chat, I don't know if you see it. Like if, you, if they don't use the Kubernetes API in some way, um, 
right? They're just some standalone tool I could use anywhere. Maybe we just we just need to find like other metrics, like uh, you know, Big Victor was it your name um, mentioned like is it CNCF hosted? Uh, another one could just be is there actual white papers showing that people are using it, right? If there's ten white papers where I'm using Kubernetes and some vector database, right? Then you know, just more evidence to to its utility of integrating with cloud native right um yeah you can see I know that for... sorry yeah i was saying that uh the lfai data landscape right here doesn't have vector databases it's just have like a store and format right so milvis is here but uh but it's not a uh, under vector databases right? so... they don't have a vector db yeah store and format i think that's the more generic way because most of store and format will go and try to do vector uh, versions for their stuff. Uh, store embeddings and vectors. But yeah. yeah but so I you're... heard from yeah. some community that, uh, uh, I, I definitely I think container CNCF overall has been really driving force for a lot of innovations, but it, it's, uh, but I think it's still probably more useful to really specify why and then what's the benefit for each particular case? Because um, what I've heard from some industry groups is that uh, you know when you hear everybody pushing Kubernetes, even if it's not the best fit, <laughs> it's still pushing Kubernetes. So end up backfiring and uh, saying you know had bad name for Kubernetes after that. It, it, this will go into a very philosophical to topic that I don't think we were at the time, but I we, I think we can go on about complexity and so on. But, it, you know, if, if I look at this, maybe let me ask this question. If I look at this versus look at ours, and I am someone who might or might not have Kubernetes, I'm just exploring the landscape, and I want to pick the right tools for the job, which, and, I, and of course, Cloud Native, you know, should suggest that we're using the best pattern, the best practices to make sure uh, the cloud dynamics and whatnot, which one would I go for uh, to, to address the question that I might have in mind? And I don't think any of the landscapes does this quite well today, because you know you have a question to have to still do the research about understanding what each does to be able to, or at least here you can put industry. Uh, I was wondering like maybe if, if we have, if we have a checkbox called a job and what tools, what, what landscape will help me figure out which tools or which solution space would get the job done um, in, a, in, a, in a cloud native way, right? This would be my, uh, my thinking. And if the cloud native landscape can be used standalone to answer this question, I would 100% without doubt do that there. If this can be used standalone to do this job, uh, because at the end of the day, why would people, why are people using it? Is it just the a verbatim list of what we have in the cloud native space, or does it serve a more purpose? If it's the first, cool, we can have both. If it's the latter and we want to have it to have it to have purpose, um, should be we should make we should make more scope decisions. Would it, would it, would it uh, make sense to define the purpose or like a written purpose of the landscape? You know, before we actually create it. Yeah, that's why it, you know we. we in, in the beginning of this uh, call, we discussed, do we, and, and it goes back to Ricardo's point, do we have a good definition of what is cloud native and what is cloud native AI? It goes back to the basics of that. And that would be the definition, like, and then, and then probably like a purpose of the cloud native AI landscape. This will help you decide one, two, three, four, if you're doing one, two, three, four, and so on. And that would be, that might be over-engineering it and, uh, not necessary, but good topics for discussion and collecting feedback, I guess. Yeah. So my my perspective on this, uh, I agree with the previous point about user stories. And I think for the short term, we should just minimize amount of projects uh, we put on a landscape and only at the projects who actually was focusing on, uh, you know, from the user side, from the experience side, from the API side to run this on Cube, on Kubernetes, right? Yes, in the future, we can expand it if we understand that Kubernetes is not the ideal tool for end-to-end -end all ML life cycles, but we are not there yet, right? So I would suggest 
for the short term, remove everything and only put tools which you're focusing to run on Kubernetes. And at least maybe have a user stories, right? Or a clear experience. Um, and there are multiple tools right here. Like for example, Q Unicorn, right? It's specifically designed to uh, improve uh, resource scheduling for AML workloads, right? Um, many of these tools actually was designed to run Kubernetes as, as a first, um, is initial infrastructure, right? So, so, so going back to this, maybe the question we want to ask is, is how Kubernetes can help you uh, build AI applications? Yep. Maybe that's... And I think we identified this in a white paper, isn't it? Like there are several pros, like what Kubernetes can offer, specifically from resource utilization, how you can optimize GPU costs, right? How you can like, you know, uh, have a portability portability, basically ability to easily port your infrastructure for multiple clouds, right? Whether it's on-prem or third-party cloud. So there are like several advantages. I believe we identified them in white paper, uh, but we can yeah, but, but then this, the scope of this is, was different from the, I think we want to make it not different. And, and so we want to answer the same questions we were trying to answer in the white paper, more or less, I guess. Yeah, but I mean, my, my gut feeling that people who, trying to be part of CNCF community to try to run the infrastructure in Kubernetes as a first place, right? Like from my understanding, there is no reason for them going to CNCF right now, rather than looking for, uh, you know, guidelines on how to run these tools on top of uh, Kubernetes, right? Which uh, is the thesis that I also have, which is also mm -hmm. why I asked, if you're going to the landscape, what is the job that you're doing? Are you going there? Uh, what answers are you looking for? If the answers are looking for what is the best way to run my AI on cube, then that gives you a very good answer, more or less, um, with better pruning and better curation of what we have here. If the if if the question is different and not on cube, then it becomes a different story. Because then I probably should go into the Linux landscape and say, yeah, how how would I run my AI application. And then there, there's Kubernetes. And then there, maybe there's a pointer to our landscape, which tells you all of the things about Kubernetes. And this is then exactly. a collaboration versus like an overlap of things. I, I agree with that, Adele, 100%. Like, you know, people, like CNCF stands under Linux Foundation, right? So Linux Foundation is like more broader compared to CNCF, right? Like it covers everything, literally. But CNCF is like very specifically focusing on running this on Kubernetes as the first, you know, citizen, at least for now, right? And where do we have, where do we have our infrastructure, right? So, so is it fair so to say I, that we go ahead? Sir. No, I was just going to say we can be bold, I guess, and then put that boldness to someone else that is not in this group and the CNCF and say, is it okay to assume cube for everything and then make it easier for folks? Because we know that they're going here to assume cube and then figure out what they want to do with their life in cube. Uh, yeah. It, it's not wrong to be bold. Uh, it's just wrong to to do it without enough transparency so i guess yeah we can do our due diligence and communicate that so how do how do we want to phrase this so, so we need to come up with a framework for the landscape or some uh, some way to say we, we, we're just going to focus on the on the Kubernetes. yeah we just need to know if we can so we have a thesis which is q is the source of cloud native and everything on top of cube will help you build AI applications better or at least contribute to it. So the this is the thesis that then we either reject it or accept it. Reject it if there's not enough agreement uh, from CNCF execs or parties. Accept it and go with it if yes, we agree. And Kubernetes is the clear winner in 2024. We have established that everyone is building a distribution. Everyone is building layered things on top of it. Uh, there's a ton of vendors, ton of contributors. We have the entire CNCF landscape or KubeCon or CNCFCon as events around Kubernetes and how things run on it. So we can, can we make that bold assumption is the question. And then that makes things very easy for us to remove things out of the landscape um, or not, or keep them if they are good citizens on Cube, and we can recommend them like, hey, you can run Quadrant on Cube, or it can run Milvis on Cube, or it can potentially, these are like side gigs. 
so this 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 could be just like a, a couple of paragraphs right that we can we can just write right uh, to make it to make it more official does that make it's sense? one question uh, yeah is, is is kubernetes the truth yeah any, any other thoughts on this or anybody else Not for me, I think I agree with a lot of that. And I would love to, yes, sorry, I, I would love to learn more like when uh, Kubernetes is not the right tool for to run uh, yeah, ML workloads. I heard about like inference problems, right? Or um, like because Kubernetes is not really good for like handling stateful applications, right? Uh, but like with the serverless architecture, not like, you know, uh, capabilities, can we address these problems? Uh, because I know there is a, like a lot of debates around like is it the right tool for me to you know do model inference or not right, um, so yeah if you have anyone in community who can provide feedback I think it also be available to understand the downside of using this for AML workloads at least for the, on the serving side right. When you say this, you mean Kubernetes? Kubernetes? Yeah yeah like I I heard like a lot of stories that for like many folks kind of agree that uh, not many, but at least some of them, right, that say our model inference, like we cannot run it on Kubernetes because Kubernetes cannot handle great around, like cannot handle state of all, like it can, but it's not ideal for state of all applications, right? I agree now. And there's a lot, ton of things like running AI, like what, what IBM is doing, yeah. so many things on top of it to make Cube smarter and scheduling and, 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 and a lot of it is also infrastructure plumping, network engineering, a lot of things, because, you know, uh, but yeah, today I would say there is a huge evolution in how people are making cubes smarter at running AI workloads, but it's not the only way to run AI workloads and inference and whatnot uh, today. But if we're making the assumption and we want to answer the question of, so initially we started this discussion as there's a lot of overlap. Then we went to the, and asked the question is we can reduce the overlap, how we could assume cube is the truth. Um, and I think the question here we ask is, can we assume it first of all, from the angle of, uh, you know, cube is the winner in the CNCF landscape. And if we say CNCF, it probably means cube. And if you don't run your AI on cube, you'd run it you know, you'd say use Bunda or use uh, uh, serverless on top of the cloud or use uh, uh, Vila or whatnot. There's lots of things that are not Kubernetes, but they're also not cloud native. So it goes back to, they're not cloud native. And so it doesn't overlap with the question of, can can it run my AI application in CNCF? Because CNCF today is mostly Q projects. Um, so your your question is still valid, uh, uh, Andre. Uh, but even if you don't, it will not be cloud native. Yeah. Also, I think it's a larger discussion around like edge devices, right? And ML on edge devices. So there is a like key three S like project, right? Which allows you to run like Kubernetes on top of, you know, um, yeah, very small devices and other things. But um, the question is like, do we need to address this? <laughs> Um, yeah, like... but, but, but Keith, so everything that is at the edge today and does Kubernetes, I mean, like the, mm -hmm. as you mentioned, K3S micro, micro, uh, Kubernetes from canonical, the microchip, whatever, there's a lot of cube stuff, but there's also, you could run with, with just, uh, 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 uh system D right. And run it in binaries and, and on a node on the edge, you don't need the entire orchestration, but again, it's not cloud native. Uh, so. Which is which brings us back maybe again to the origins. What is cloud native? And if we know the answer, we probably also know that it it is one way or the other pointing to Kubernetes. If not, then we have to revisit a lot of things. If yes, then what you said also is not cloud native if it's not on on Kubernetes because truth to be told, everything is Kubernetes. This is how we're. Assuming it, which we can point, by the way, if it's not cube, have a look at the Linux foundation and see what you can run on just Linux. Uh, if you don't want, if you don't like Kubernetes and it's not right for your use case, don't want to persist information there. 
which is the thing that we're trying to resolve. Makes sense. So I'll, I'll take a look at, you know, creating some paragraph for this, uh, to for the landscape and to try to like constrain, you know, what, what we want to put in there. Mm -hmm. Are there, are there any other things that we want to do um, in the next couple of weeks? That, I mean, we have the landscape going on and uh, we want to find some logos or, I know, uh, Ron, you'll be finding some logos, and but do we want to wait until we come up with this framework, or or we, we still want to? Um, I mean, if we're, we're we're the cat's about to get out of the bag, right? In a week, <laughs> so um, yeah. this is just work. I mean, being general here, right? So things like I was going to say, if there's other things, I'd say thinking about the website. Um, the GitHub repo, just just like taking a pass to make sure they're all linked to each other, right? So people can uh, actually surf around without doing a bunch of discovery. Um, yeah, j j I mean, you, you get the idea, right? Just just basic cleanup of the places to find us. Um, I mentioned this in the white paper or for the white paper. And uh, even at the end, I, I made a suggestion to like, just at the very end, I mean, it has all of our you know names at the beginning, but at the end, I was like, well, who are we, right? Like this was brought to you by the CN CFAI working group, right? But there was still no link. Like, wh what am I going to do? Google it, right? Like, are you going to like dig around and be like, yeah, join this Slack, go find this channel, go do like, that's not a very good way to interact with people, I don't think. Um, so any anything we can do to like, just make it easier to navigate, not that this needs to be like the most popular group in the world, but uh, anything to, you know, make it easier, I think will make the longevity more likely. We should create QR codes and create call to actions in KubeCon and wear them as, and, and, and stick them on our uh, names. People. Yeah, I mean, how are they going to ask questions, right? It's like yeah. they talk to you for one minute and there's no way to follow up, right? Nobody's going to spend the time digging around to follow up, right? So... Uh, I think this can be done by by each one of us, right? So we don't have to do like the QR codes, right? I think yeah. the point that uh, uh, Ronald is trying to make is there's no call to action in any of the things we have. Like, what is the call to action to, to go next? Where do I go next after reading this? I guess this is where we might. Can we reach to design to have something in the paper about this? Uh, not anymore because I mean it's already out. <laughs> okay. We we get at any additional things that we, we we could also I mean for example like a little sticker or I don't know like a uh, a URL in the CNCF that directs to the white paper. Yeah, we can do it. like any additional things that that can actually help out. But in the white paper that's already out, and, and then we can do a V two, but that will be after the the after KubeCon. So, any, sure. so yeah, any ideas that if you have, then we can we can pass it on. But no, well, not, can, can we put all of our URLs here? Um, uh, like there's like you said, like we talked about yesterday. Uh, there's there's the GitHub. There's the website, um, which includes the charter. There's now going to be a link to this paper. Just and I mean that's what I mean. You got website updates, but like, um, yeah. just making it sure. I mean, I need to, to be honest. I didn't even. I should have known there was a website, but I did it. You know, it's not like in my mind, right? Uh, so I'm here, and I didn't even know to look. <laughs> we can well, we can edit the web. I mean, how hard is it to to put to put a PR to the website to put something? In it's, the... easy. it's easy. It's easy. Yeah, so so we... I don't think it's 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 hard. We just put the PR add just curate what we want to put there because we don't we have the Slack channel for our group. I don't think th there is, yeah, only the Slack. Where, where do we want to point folks now? Um, yeah, we can actually. Um, well, there is a URL already. Um, so we can actually create a PR right here in content. Mm -hmm. so it's posted here. So in working I put groups. it in the chat, uh, Adele. Yeah. 
So there's, you can just create your, I don't know, subdirectory here. And here's an index, but it's blank. There's nothing there, which is actually this page here. And so we can add more things here. Yeah, I think just because we don't want to, I mean, you guys are, every, everyone's busy, right? So like I, I would just say get on that page, the link to the white paper, the link to the Git repo and call it a day, right? It's just, they're there, there's something. And then as far as getting the word out, like how do they even find this? Um, I think, you know, like you said, we can't update the paper, but it's a chicken in the egg, right? We just need QR codes or whatever, you know, at the show to be like, yeah, this is our group's website. And then maybe also put the instructions on how to get on Slack right there. Um, Cause otherwise you're digging around and it's just not intuitive. Well, they, it's in the charter, but uh, I don't know. Yeah, but, but you got to get to the website first, right? <laughs> to get to the charter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the website here, if you click on here, the charter is here. So, all so okay, maybe we can try something. If, if, if you type cloud native, AI, I don't know if SEO is up to date, but if I type platform, uh, uh, CNCF, it points me somewhere to the website, platform AI, uh, uh, engineering. Uh, I mean like this, like in Google? Yeah, I, I think it is it, not yet out. How, how, when was this, uh, when was this published? Oh, here. Right. here it is. Yeah. Here you go. And it's it's not it's one of the top non-sponsored. So I would say, if you search, you should find it. Uh, and then this might go up even more, with with more people searching. Yeah. And we have a mailing list too, so we can also well that uh, we haven't used this a lot yet, but there's also yeah. I think I tried to just get on that yesterday, and I don't think I can. There was like no uh i'll double check but i didn't see like like sometimes there's like a button to like join and there was none here yeah you need to join their mailing list system i think yeah i'm in it i'm in a bunch of other ones i in some of them i thought if i i could be making this up but i'm pretty sure there's ones where you could just you know plus like there's a subscription email but like you know we're talking about people who aren't haven't been around the block right so do they know to like subs email subscribe at you know this or that right like it's uh, again like you got to spell those steps out and to have it 20 pages into our charter is not the best place to have it yeah okay so i think we're out of time um we have uh, another meeting i think in a couple of weeks i think it might might not happen because it's in Oh, it might happen. Yeah, it's after KubeCon, but uh, I might not be around. So, but I'll. There will be Easter. No, I don't know if it's clashing with that. Yeah, but uh, it, if I'm not around, I think we can still meet. I mean, or the other folks can still meet too. So. Yeah. And then we we could keep uh, chatting on Slack. And... Good news, good stuff. We have a paper. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's great. So, Ricardo, for the KubeCon, I guess, like, uh, Priyanka are going to share this, right? And uh, what is next step on the KubeCon, just for us? Are they going to yeah. announce the working API, or...? Sorry, so you're going to like, announce uh, what? Are they going to announce that probably in the future they're going to formalize a new working group? Like, how... Uh, what is the next step for them? I mean, the, the working group is already formalized within the CNCF, so... To, okay. so so for them, for them to next step is just up to us, right? Like what what we plan for next steps. Are, I mean, we're talking about the landscape. We're talking about a radar. We're mm -hmm. talking about making it easier for people to join um, uh, AI, cloud native AI with something like Qflow, like in a box, Qflow in a box or something. Uh, but so it's all up to us, right? Like what uh, what we mm -hmm. and, and then they're just there to to promote that, like to help out and to to get more contributors, to get more people interested, to to grow the group, and yeah. Makes sense. All right. Thank you then, see you, see you next week then. <laughs> How many of you will be in person uh, in Paris? I'll be in person, Adele will be I, in person. Yeah, I will, I'll be as well, hopefully, if <laughs> nothing else goes wrong. I don't know, Victor, are you going there? No, I got it.
Yeah, so and Ron's not going and Cla Claudia is not going and I think some other folks will be there. Great, great. Let's catch up All definitely. Right. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Thank right. you all. Bye. Bye. Have fun, everybody, next week. Bye. Yeah, have fun.